Okay. Let's proceed. So, hello everybody. So, we're Polly and Sam, and uh, we're live on Freedom Strider, where we are basically all about uh, travel and full-time travel in the comfort of home. Hence, we're designing our own van conversion, as you can see in this, okay, the small screen up here, uh, you can see our van layout, layout stuff, okay? So, what we're doing is we're designing a... Uh, van conversion for a long wheelbase, uh, sort of a, a Mercedes Sprinter, a VW Crafter sort of size van, if you can imagine what that is. Um, and today, the big question is, uh, how do we fit a full-size shower, that one that you can stand up in, um, and, you know, not basically hit the walls constantly, and basically feel very claustrophobic in it, uh, without actually taking too much space in the small space that we are designing in. So, in the van. Precisely. So, uh, yeah, basically we want a full-size shower, but we don't want to take that much space. You know, yep. so we need to figure out a way to basically not have the shower <laughs> in the way. Wonderful. Um, Someone has already answered our question within 10 minutes. You can't. That is no attitude. Uh, the, 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 you, can't, you, can't have, you can't have that attitude. No, it is always possible. And until recently, I, I didn't know that I could feed, uh, feed, feed, fit... Um, uh, you know, like a bed and a half to two beds in a van, but you can, you can, okay? Therefore a shower can fit in there. Yeah, and we're going to do a live stream on that maybe, I don't know, next month or something. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know dates, okay? At some point, I'm going to show you what we sort of figured out, but showers today, it is possible, and um, we're going to get onto that now. Here's one we created earlier. <laughs> <laughs> we're not Blue, Pe Blue Peter. Okay. Okay. So. First off. First off. A shower. Very eloquent. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, because we're, we're, we're designing our, uh, our uh, van for a more long-term solution uh, sort of living and a four, uh, in, in four season uh, living, that's what we really want to have a proper shower. The, the one at least like somehow you can easily enter it, shower and exit without playing too much of a, of a jigsaw puzzle with the setting but you know you can play you, you can make it sort of a, a convertible shower however yeah. it needs to be easily convertible so however whatever mechanism you, you know we can cook up you know we need to make it work with maybe uh three movements you know one two three shower up whatever that's done uh, but how are you gonna fit a full-size bed kitchen and a shower a full-size bed kitchen and a shower um well with we... immense creativity and imagination moments that's how and i'm sure that means more more more, more to you than the, <laughs> most people actually more to you than it does to me but a lot of things are going to be moving and turning and swiveling and, and stuff it, like that and yes the van is magical Yes, it is. it is. Exactly like the Ford Angler in Harry Potter, indeed. Yes, uh, I should really ask Mr. Weasley about that spell. Do you remember the spell? Is, is it an undetectable extension charm? That? Da, da, da. that is the wrong movement. Remember Wizard Borufio who said F instead of S yes. and ended up with a buffalo on his head. I probably got copyrighted for this right now. Anyway. <laughs> It's okay. I, I don't. I don't. I don't sound like like, like uh, Jim Dale. So I don't think that the the, the I'll audience check will catch it. it. She's gonna check for you. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Where was I? I was talking about showers. I don't even remember where I got about with showers. Okay. You don't want to do too much of a Tetris jigsaw with it. Yes. Okay. Because it's a more uh, lo 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 long term solution. Okay. So so that's where we are. So, uh, first of all, um. What is a shower? Like, how, how big of a shower uh, are we imagining to have? And actually, uh, the average size of a shower is roughly... about... Uh, what the shower tray itself is 70 by 70. 70. Minimum. 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 Like, that's the smallest standard size it, that you can buy. If, if it's any less, you know, you'll you basically start. be in, in a tube and well. you'll be basically not showering and then you're just going to be drowning. <laughs> no one is saying that all of these will be fitted simultaneously. Shh. Uh, not all I, we're, we're, we're trying to. Uh, we're getting closer. But really, that is really the close. idea. Yes. That things are not all out at the same time all the time. But they can be. But they can be. So but so there's... we don't want them to. So we want to make sure that they can be put away. But uh, we want them to be able to be usable by 
uh, us and guests at the same, you know, time. That's the idea. Yes. Yeah. So we're working on it, and we're all magical and stuff. So we'll work it out eventually. We and might, we, we'll we, might we might have to go to Hogwarts first, but we'll do it. Okay, <laughs> we'll do it. Okay. Yeah. So the standard size for a shower at minimum is seventy by seventy. And that's just the shower tray that you stand on. So when you start taking into account the thickness of the glass and the the, the silicon you have to put around, and then obviously the contraption itself. Usually the floor space that it takes up is usually around 80 by 80 to 90 by 90. That's in centimeters. Like So in terms of floor space, we're looking for it to take about um, 80 centimeters. Yeah. 80, yeah, 80 centimeters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. floor space wise. Yeah. Unfortunately, showers are quite big. <laughs> and you can't really reduce it more. The smaller the shower, you won't be able to turn around easily. And you'll feel like you're just in a big tube all the time and it won't feel very nice okay. and uh we don't really want to compromise on the shower by just having like a like something they like can't that. see that because i'm showing them this hey <laughs> get away from me but anyway yeah that's the shower's cubicle space there not to scale to that obviously but yeah we're gonna draw, draw we, yeah actually i should draw it to scale shouldn't i i should no. draw it to scale uh roughly uh give me the ruler the ruler is on the table yeah. oh it's one Okay, do you want to uh, zoom in? Actually, yeah. let's zoom in to... Uh, hold on. Uh, no, no, use, use the yellow zoom. But they can't see us the other way. There we go. Okay. So, if we were to pop the shower somewhere, uh, the door of the van is located round about there. Yeah. Like that. Oops, sorry, that's wrong Wrong view. That's bird's eye view, so... We're on bird's eye view here. The door just compromises about that much space. And then here, on the side view, that's where roughly the door is. So yeah, that's looking at the side. Okay, the so if, yes. we ta we, if the shower is going to take a permanent uh, um, space on the floor uh, of uh, 80 by 80, it's going to be... In a, oh, for I'll put the bed on first on the bird's eye view. The bed at the back, just so for like comparison's yeah. sake. Uh, the bed is about one thirty-five, so that's one about there. This is bed. Yeah, we're just sticking at the bed, like we can. Okay. Discussed in our first one. Chances are the bed is going to be. Not lengthways, it's going to be something like that. So we're just going to put the bed there. Well, well no, uh, yeah. what happened is that it's just it's easier to put the bed this way um, yeah. and maneuver things around. And then, you put... um, and then the shower tray, so 80 centimeters on this will be, I'll, I'll do it about four centimeters. It's very difficult to draw on this with the ruler yeah. without rubbing things out. I'm gonna switch to this view. Okay, that's close enough. Right. Shower. Shower. So that's roughly the shower to scale in comparison with the bed and the uh, space inside the van. Now, if you look here. So we haven't included the kitchen and we haven't included any other like seating or sofas or tables or anything else. So if you imagine, you know, a kitchen, I don't know, running along here. So if the kitchen is about here. Usually people like a decent sized kitchen. So there's your kitchen. That's a small kitchen. That's a small kitchen. And then, uh, you know, then you need some seating or, or something. So... Let's call that uh, seating and storage. So you've got storage underneath the seats here, you've got your kitchen here, your bed here, your shower there, which can also house like the toilet as well. Sometimes they build it all in one, but that's just the shower cubicle, that's just the shower tray right now. You can see that um, not a lot of space is left when everything is out in order for moving around or anything else. 
So yeah. So basically, uh, the in the in the van, the amount of space that the shower tray would take if it's always there would actually take quite a bit of space. Also, if you if you if um, the shower tray, so that would be roughly here on the side view. If the shower is there, the shower tray will be here. Remember that you also have the height. Yeah, because you have to have when you're showering, you have to have the shower the um what's it called? The the thing that releases the shower the head. The shower head has to be above you. So everything from that shower head down has to be covered and watertight. Yeah. Which um usually requires a floor to ceiling cubicle chamber. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, I think people do curtains and they try and tuck it yeah. in the inside. So, 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 anyway. so essentially, wherever you put your shower, and no matter what size your shower is, it's going to need to have basically some sort of tray for the water to go into and some sort of waterproof barrier, such as walls and things like that. So yeah. it depends what uh, how, how of a rigid full shower you actually <laughs> want to put in your van. Um, so obviously you can build the whole cubicle and just seal it completely. Um, yeah. And then basically it, you can't fold that compartment away in any way, shape or form. It is there. It is taking the space regardless of how often you actually use your shower. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. With a shower, in comparison to the other things in, in, in actually just these four things here. The bed you use, well, to sleep on, so that's, what, at least eight hours a day, eight hours per 24 hours. And then also quite a lot of people in vans, us included, as we, we did and we will, uh, we use the bed for just lounging on, resting, uh, going reading, whatever. Like, you use it as a space. The kitchen, you use it to cook, clean, counterboards, whatever. You use it regularly. The shower, in a 24-hour period, if you have a shower once a day, how long will you use that shower cubicle for? Probably about 10 minutes, maybe 15, depends how long your showers are. Depends how big your water tanks are. And depends how big your water tanks are. But for the amount of space that it's taking up in comparison to everything else, for the amount of time that you use it per day, it's, uh, it's quite an inconvenience. But basically, is it really worth it to have that whole basically volume of space taken up Catching by up a continuously. shower? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's something really important to think about, especially as we get on with discussing ideas. Because obviously the easiest thing to do is, well, the shower is yay big. I need to put the shower somewhere. I need to put this volume of space somewhere, somewhere. in the van. So it's going to take some space in the van, no matter what you do. Uh, so he, we're going to really discuss things that will move away from either taking, uh, you know, vertical space co uh, uh, continuously or even basically the floor space yeah uh, uh, as a general rule as well mm -hmm. so um first let, let, let's discuss um where do people usually put their shower so uh basically you can put your shower anywhere a, a, any anywhere in the van that you want so yeah, for example you have, this, you have this entire rectangle and you have another square <laughs> oh breathe there. okay so, uh, let, so this is the, the bird's eye view um so as here, the, w w w one place to put the shower is like next to the door, which uh, is all right. You know, it depend depends what you need um, and how it affects everything else. Personally, the, the the thing that I just rubbed out creates a corridor, which we, if you followed us before, uh, would know that we don't really fancy corridors, especially narrow corridors yeah. in tiny spaces. In fact, if you're watching this within the first couple of days that it's released, our previous video, our first fan layout design video, if you go to like uh, about 10, 11 minutes in, you'll see us actually designing and measuring the narrow walkway in that van. That was only, well, that um, was between like the... It was the... 45, I believe. And we were designing something and we turned it out that the corridor, in order to fit what we wanted, had to be 35. So, yeah, but quite gonna quite often you have the, uh, the most standard, bog standard design is that you have the bed at the back kitchen on one side and the shower cubicle toilet bathroom area on the other side and you create a narrow channel down the middle okay so uh that was um so, so the, the, the first place to put it is uh, ne next to the next to the door so yeah. I, I should probably draw just draw them like all together what are we gonna do down down the bottom rough sketches no or? no i rubbed that out for a reason okay so um a lot of people, um, actually not a lot of people, but I've seen it a few times. Uh, you can put your shower cubicle 
here in the corner opposite the or, or opposite the door which uh, uh, leaves a very nice and neat basically you enter this is your kind of entryway and then you have the whole space to arrange your bed and your kitchen any way you like okay so that kind of kind of stuffs the um uh shower out the way in the corner not really interrupting any of the doors yeah um also this one i was um i was thinking it would be nice you know how there's those kind of semi-circular showers? Yeah, where you round the edge there yeah. so that you don't keep banging your hips. Well, it's, not, it's not so much that you round the edge so you don't bang it. It's it's more of a... Uh, it actually cuts a lot of the, the floor space that it's taking. So yeah. that that could be obviously a permanent feature there in the corner, just tucked away um, and basically just hope you, you don't need that space. <laughs> uh, so that's one of the spaces that you can put it. Another space that I've seen people put it uh, I've seen some people uh, put, put the showers in the back. So here next to the d double opening doors. Oof. Put it like that. And, and basically, um, you know. It's there. It's but there. The, the thing is with the back shower design, I mean, it depends if you need to use your back doors or would like to use your back doors. But this design does pretty confidently block access from the inside going out doesn't mean you can't go from the outside and open the door but then obviously you know maybe the water ceiling in here goes a little off yeah so generally these two have something very much in common is that they're, they're also they're both tucked away in the corners and they're sort of like okay th th this one this one leaves all the doors open th this one could basically block yeah. this entire wall if, if you do a big shower uh, compartment that goes the whole way yeah and the other thing... The, this is shower and toilet, by the way, actually. Yeah, people, you you know, put the shower and toilet together. Yeah. If there's going to be a wet room, you put them together. The other thing about these ones is, obviously, anything that you design to be the shower has to be waterproof. Now, you know, building a shower out in the middle, if you put a big cube in the middle, that means you have to make four walls and four corners. Usually it's the corners, not the walls. Four corner joints... From are, ceiling to are you suggesting we put a shower in the middle of the van? No, I'm making a point. <laughs> oh, okay. You have to waterproof each of these walls and most importantly, the corner joints between them. No matter where you put it, you'll have to do that. Yes, but the point is if you put it against the wall in a corner, you only have to build two walls as opposed to building four. And this, like, <laughs> you do have to silicon around it, but two of the walls are already built. It depends um, how you want your shower cubicle and such to work. Uh, uh, you you have to build all the walls anyway because um uh, well what you do is basically so the you have the outer of the van then you have the insulation and all the reflectix and then you yeah. have the cladding um now if your shower is against the wall uh instead of putting cladding you put basically another piece of material. Uh, an, another piece of ply or yeah. whatever you or, or aluminum or whatever material you use it's uh, up for grabs at this point. Hmm. Uh, but whatever you do, you have to make sure it's waterproof by, 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 yeah. by the time it's done. All right, let's rub out the stupid yeah. one in the middle. Okay. I mean, you just create your van into one gigantic shower. Why not? Oh, I remember so, so, uh, we were asked, uh, asked uh, a few live streams ago what, what, to, to do a swimming pool in the van. So Yeah, hot tub. Hot tub. Create a giant hot tub. In actual fact... Uh, quite a few bathrooms are bigger than the van space surface area. Just just kind of put that into perspective for you. Our entire house will fit in the size of some people's bathrooms. Yes. Perfect. And we're trying it? to fit a bathroom in a bathroom. Well, how can you <laughs> travel around with your entire home is, is, otherwise? If all it is is a bathroom. Yeah. Well, Indeed. technically, um, what, what would be the best place in the house to get trapped in? Would it be the kitchen or would it be the bathroom? Definitely wouldn't be the bedroom because you have neither. Oh, definitely not the bedroom. I just said the kitchen or, or the bathroom. One place has a lot of toothpaste, and uh, but it has water and, 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 and toilet drinks. I prefer services. the bathroom. Hmm. Well, but you have no food in the bathroom. Yeah, but in the kitchen, you have no waste disposal and you have no... Do you know you have the bins? Well, you, you can try and make a composting toilet that are out of your materials in the kitchen. I know. Uh, no. Can, can cornflakes act, act like sawdust? How about hair clippings? Hair clippings? We don't have enough hair for, 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 for that much. For, we, no, we don't have enough hair for that much waste. So 
So I, I, I okay. I'm, I'm gonna get trapped in the kitchen. You get trapped in the bathroom. We're fine. And we'll see who lasts the longest. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> okay. So. Can I bring food with me? No. You get trapped in the bathroom, and you don't choose to be trapped in what the bathroom. What happens if you get trapped? You just, in... you just get trapped. Actually, the kitchen is good because then you have the hob for heat as well. Yes, you do, and you, you both place you have water. In one place you have food and Okay, kitchen. I retract my statement. I want the kitchen. No, nope, but I'm afraid you can't retract your statement. Kitchen. <laughs> okay. We're getting distracted. Yeah, but, but I, I don't think so. I think it's, uh, this is a very, very practical conversation all to do with van life. Right, so we hit the 30 minute mark. <laughs> have we? Yep. No. Oh, it's okay, but the first five to six minutes were, were blah, 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 blah. Can you hear us? Blah, blah, blah. We're starting. Okay. So, anyway. So, yeah. Most, uh, quite a few people either put the shower here in the corner or put it right at the back in the corner or take the entire back space, depending how big of a bathroom slash shower area yeah. they want to have. Yeah, and if, uh, if like before you put the shower here, sort of in the middle, so by the um, door or on this side to counteract it. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, uh, what you need to do is ensure that. Um, by for, from our recommendation, the, what, what we prefer to do is uh, basically have really nothing opposite uh, the cubicle. Yeah, because okay? like we said, you don't want to create a nice thin channel here in the middle that you constantly have to be squeezing it past. Ain't gonna be nice. Yeah. So um, now, now that you sort of sort of arbitrarily try to visualize where to put the, the actual uh, shower contraption um, in relation to everything else. Um, actually, what shower options um, are, we lo are we looking at? So, now, if you see our wonderful drawings here. Can they see it? They can indeed. I'm going to zoom in right on them, right okay. here. This is the ones that we drew earlier. So there are several options that, that you Ooh, can go sorry. with. Sorry. Do not hit your head against the camera. I already did. I'm, I'm afraid. Okay. So we have option one. They go from um, rustic and basic to more elaborate yes, on, so. on the scale. So here at the very end on the first scale, we have either a solar shower or basically some of those pump showers or basically a shower in a bag, a portable shower. Okay. I'll, I'll put a shower in a bag. Shower in a bag. A oh. shower... Uh, in a bag wonderful so basically what this is is a little pouch or tub or container of water usually no more than about 10 liters yeah. and either you pour hot water into it you know itself uh, or like this one is a solar shower so you use the solar panels to heat water and or, or you connect it to a hot water supply and basically you either create pressure or you connect it to electricity which creates pressure and voila, you have a simple shower. Usually these ones can be taken outside. You can use them inside. They're portable. Well, they're the, solar, the solar channel, the solar uh, showers in particular need sun. Yeah. So you have to take them out. So if we stick to the solar uh, sh 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 shower version of this, uh, usually they are taken outside because that that's their power source, yeah. uh, which means that if it's minus 10 degrees or <laughs> any, <laughs> anything ab below 15 degrees, most likely, you will be freezing your, your, your ass off. Okay? Plus, it's not that stealthy, is it? You know, if you have to go outside your van to go and take a shower. Yeah, so, so usually what people do is, uh, is they um, open their back doors... So that's the back of the van. These are the back doors. Just quickly trying to get that across. Okay. And what people do is they attach the shower. Yeah, they attach the shower to the inside of one of the door, one of the door panels. Yeah. And you have to hold that. It doesn't actually just hang there. I mean, um, you can have a... You can have a hook. And then basically you just stretch a curtain. For privacy's sake. For privacy's sake. There so we go across yeah. either like a semicircle or right across there. Yeah. And then you just take your shower. Take and, a uh, shower and uh, enjoy life. So yeah. that, that that's the most rustic basic version of the shower. But but as we said, we're going for a full time use. So a and huge disadvantage of this is it's not uh, for uh, season. It's not four seasons and it's also uh, also not able to be used when you're, say, like parked in a city or parked somewhere where you do not want to go outside in just your swimming well, trunks. Somewhere where it's not appropriate to take a shower in public. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. There so, are quite a lot of those places. So 
that's this one. It's quite basic. It's portable, but it does have its downsides. Yeah. The next option along is a bucket. A bucket. A bucket shower. We're going from a bag shower to a bucket uh, Top shower. tip, you can also use a bucket for a toilet, but don't get them mixed up. <laughs> no, no, please don't. So what we mean by, by a bucket shower, it, it, it's actually more advanced than the, than the solar bag sort of shower. What we mean is uh, um, if you have basically a portable, you know, just a normal bucket or some sort of container that you can step in, like a big enough tub to step in. Yeah, it's like some um, of those tubs that you would use, I don't know, you know those ones that uh, actually, when you're a baby and you take an entire bath in, those big tubs that you stand in? I don't know like, what they're called. I don't know um, what they're called, but those things, but you just basically get one that's big enough to stand in and turn around in, and then you put either a curtain or, yeah, or so something. Yeah, so what it will look like is uh, it's a deep bucket. Um, this is your with your um, ceiling here, okay? And... Oh, and what you do is you attach the curtain to the top somehow. You have the curtain dripping onto the inside of the bowl. Yeah, and then you step inside. Oof. And happy days. And you got that hook there, and then you have the person. Who has very here. short legs. Oh, shut up. You know, washing their hair. Where they go, a little soap. Whistling. How do you, how do, you do whistles? I, uh, no, visually. How do you do whistles visually? Let's do some... Okay. One. Okay. <laughs> I dropped my, my cap. Uh, okay. There it is. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that's the next one. Uh, basically, a simple tub either with... I mean, you can have, a I don't know, more than a curtain, but usually, because the curtain's dripping on the inside that way, the water all stays on the inside. You hold... The shower head above you and you do your shower yeah. this one can be done inside obviously you can have a one that is either permanently fixed to the floor or you just have one that you you pull out well the you... pull out is, is is the third option here but yeah. uh just going back to this one with the bucket so you can uh you think about the uh, drainage so either uh it's um a deep enough bucket that can contain the water that you just used and then you you throw it out like you, yeah you, you like you take the container uh, out and throw. well either either outside or the, down your sink which has access to your gray water yeah um uh, or uh you, like you said like uh, whether whether the the uh, ba uh the basket moves uh whether it's portable or not uh you can basically place it on a on a hole or drain uh, that is all pre-installed in your van um, and basically you secure it that way that will take that will take a bit a bit more um planning and um, waterproofing um but it is possible so that, that that's sort of like the cheaper option than having a tray uh, or any sort of solid wall around you there we go so um yeah <sighs> perfect uh so then the third option that we have on here had on bucket showers Bucket showers have to be very big and heavy. Uh, big, yes. Heavy, no. Uh, they are heavy when you fill, fill it with water. Oh, yeah, they're heavy when you fill it with water. If you fill it with 30 litres of water, that's 30 kilos you then have to carry out the van and not spill on your floor. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that is very true. Yeah. So uh, we would advise that you have some sort of drain that drains the water while you're showering rather than have X amount of litres of water to throw away at the end yeah um so and the third option here which is in an upgraded bucket um is can basically, we call it upgraded bucket um okay upgraded bucket oh it even gets it on the top now great yeah okay so what it is it's uh um a Look, it looks like a normal standard uh, sh shower tray. Uh, you can, you know, DIY de de a tray like that yourself with like acrylic or some sort of perspex or something like that. Um, or, uh, or, or you could actually just buy a regular shower tray yeah. and put it on wheels or tracks yeah. or something. Uh, obviously, with buying regular shower trays, you have to consider the weight factor. So sometimes. Do not yeah. get one that weighs a lot. Make Get one that's made of, I don't know, plastic or perspex or something, not Aluminium. those porcelain ones. Yeah, so, and what this is, is uh, uh, basically it's a pull-out tray. One that is cleverly disguised, let's say, underneath a couch. So if that's a uh, couch. Do you want me to draw? 
No, I don't want you to draw. <sighs> so, what happens is this is a seat or some sort of storage. And then here at the bottom, there is just a drawer that when you pull it out, it actually is a shower tray. There we go. Okay. Um, and uh, there are, uh, and basically underneath, okay, um, and basically underneath here, the, this, this is the uh, um, plug hole. Drain is the drain, yeah. um, and you have a um, flexible pipe yes, uh, yes. that that folds. Oh, stop drawing there. I need yeah. the space. Okay. Where's the rubber? You've stolen the rubber. No, I haven't. And I told you not to draw while I'm drawing. Okay. So here underneath, this, the, you won't be able to see this on top. But underneath, there basically is a is a pipe that goes inside back there, and, and then, then and then that link links. To the grey water, yeah. as he demonstrated uh, weirdly on the on, yeah. on the day. Basically, that flexible hose. So when you pull it all the way out, there's enough slack in it to allow you to pull it all the way out, and then you push it back in, and the hose kind of get pushes gets pushed back and contorts like a snake into a bundle at the back and doesn't break. Yeah. So that basically, once the shower is away, even if there's any water left, it can still drain all the way through. Yeah. So uh, that is the sh shower tray. Again, you just have a a, a curtain that does the, the the same thing there yeah. uh, as with the bucket. Hence, the is the upgraded bucket. Now, um, uh, the uh, option oh, oh, four. Oh, option four is just the uh, the standard cub cubicle. Uh, the one that, that that we drew up here. You know, that the goes to the full height. Yeah. So the standard fixed cubicle that's there all the time, and is water sealed as such. Yeah. So, and option five is the one that um, I'm pretty happy that um, dun, dun. we're sharing that one with you because it's so cool. Um, what's up? What about the open grill on the floor? Open grill? What open grill? Oh, are you talking about that? That's just meant to signify that the bucket can move. No, that was just a shadow. Ah. But you can... It, uh, that 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 is one way to basically ensure that the water drains. Um, uh, you basically just install a um, a open grill drain uh, on the floor, and and then basically the water drips there. However, in terms of insulation, uh, <laughs> that <laughs> would uh, will, will cause problems because uh, it's most likely a wide gash, uh, metal gash that doesn't have really any insulation and it has a direct access to the outside because the water tank will most likely be mounted the grey water tank will most likely be mounted under yeah yeah so, so um, option five option Let's... five is what um i would like to call is a um it's a i think it's sort of a um how do you spell japanese yes like that yeah japanese uh, uh, uh shower tub um, convertible. That's why it's more convertible. Convertible. Okay, and what this uh, sort of thing looks like is uh, Japanese tubs are very deep. Or this, I don't. Why are they called Japanese tubs? Are they actually, do they actually come from Japan? Probably so. Um, yeah. So basically, it's a tub that what uh, that you can. Um, as demonstrated uh, on the thumbnail, m m m in much more um, detail uh, and straight lines, uh, it's a tub that uh, you can sort of you can sit inside. So, like when you're sitting inside, your head kind of is just peeking out over the top. Yeah. So if you're um, inside, basically you you crouch, sort of like. Um, like that and you uh, shower yeah like that okay um you know person looks a bit cramped I and mean, kind of like an insect but that, that 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 that's what they're designed to do um and if you make them you know wide enough you ha you'll have plenty of space to basically just uh, sit around and shower and do, do your business and stuff like that it's only 10 minutes a day uh but all, what i was thinking was so we can take that idea so obviously the, the this sort of tub will most likely take 
uh, the, the floor space, but I was thinking, well, it doesn't have, but, okay, how do we get a tub like this to basically act as a full size shower, because this is a half a size shower. So, what I was thinking is, can you give me my pen back? What I was thinking might be cool is to have the, so that's the tub. And that's only about uh, like a kitchen counter size tub. Yeah. In terms of height. And then what you do is you have a secondary wall. On the inside. On the inside. Like that. Just... Like that. And then this wall. Basically, this is a secondary wall like that and then drum roll please uh well don't need to get so <laughs> much uh, t tension i will not be able to draw straight lines <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is we have like that and then you put the secondary wall on some sort of rail or pulley system, and then basically it, it just extends up. It, ex it extends up, and voila, you have your full shower. Um, the so imagine this like goes most of the way, if not all the way, to the ceiling. Yeah, and then basically your person's in there doing their business and stuff. Voila. Hit the part of his hands. <laughs> Near enough. Yes. So, yeah. So basically, so, basically, you have a piece on the inside that can extend upwards that is all waterproof on rails so that either you can have a smaller box, which can then, you know, put something like a lid or something else over it. You could use it as a seat even. Use it as like a toilet storage space as well. And then when you need to use a shower for, like I said, those 10 minutes a day that you do actually need the shower cubicle out, you then either take the lid off you take whatever you've got on top off, you step in. If you want to have a crouch shower, then you can just use the box. But if you want a full, I want to stand up and wash everything shower, then you can extend these up and you can stand in the shower. It's more like, if, like, if, so. it's like if, if you want a dance shower, you can wash everything either way. Um, uh, now, the advantage of having basically um, the shower tray essentially fixed to the, the, to, to the floor and it not pull in and out or anything is the waterproofing factor because here you can you can safely um seal you can safely seal yeah and use an entire tub of silicon to yeah. squeegee it all in yeah so basically you 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 can you can basically be absolutely certain that that water will not go anywhere in in your van that it shouldn't yeah. and you don't have any moving parts on the pipe work and yeah. the, the bottom work. Yeah. This is a moving part, which has to be silicon well. But in comparison to this one over here, where the pipe itself is actually physically moving, yeah, it's... Um, I mean, you can weigh it up, but yeah. personally, not having less movable parts means less things are going to go wrong. Yes. And we're not saying don't have a pull-out tray. We, we actually haven't decided whether we're going to have a pull-out tray or not. Yeah. Uh, this is just uh, one of the ideas that was like, well, that would be kind of cool to share with you. And actually, talking about the extra chain, like, I, we have more detailed designs of this particular shower type with the extra ideas on, yeah. on our Patreon. Um, uh, it's part of our... Um, um, it's part of our um, uh, the monthly challenge, design challenge. Yeah. Well, where we basically uh, we have a topic and we share uh, ideas, and uh, everybody can submit their own designs, and we submit like at least two designs a month as well, as basically whatever ideas hit us. Uh, nothing overly uh, complicated or anything like like that, but generally the, the ideas can be pretty cool, and then we just hope that somebody will take them and uh, actually work them out to make them possible. But if you want to know more in detail, like more detailed designs and actually how to build them potentially, um, or, 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 where, or where to start building them, then Patreon is a place to uh, go and find us. Yes, yeah, so there's yeah. a link down below that will lead you to the Patreon page. You can have a sieve through. Like we said, it's part of the monthly challenge, the $20 a month package. So... Yeah, you can go and check that out. There'll be more designs and stuff there anyway, regardless of which tier you have, because we do, you know, Patreon-only uh, posts and, and other things. So you can go and check it out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, basically, these are sort of the, some of the, the, the shower ideas uh, um, that people have used out there and, uh, and that we are sort of developing. Uh, we have a few more that we a bit too 
uh, flaky and complicated to explain in, thi in, in this live stream. Uh, so we're probably going to do actually specific live streams on them so we can actually spend more time uh, on um, those particular designs. Guys, check the light. There's a shadow on the board. Uh, yeah, well, it's the camera shadow. Yeah, there's not a lot we can do about it. It's getting dark outside now. Can we... I mean, the only thing I can do is do that. That's a bit better. It's just if I have to go up. Anyway, that's fine. All right, we'll there do that go. for now. There you go. Gorge your eyes on our amazing artistics. What? When did you do that? When I had the pen. What does that say? Japanese. But what does it say? Japanese. It says Japanese. In Japanese. In Japanese. In Japanese. Okay. Does that mean mountain? Or is that the sign for mountain? What does that sign sign stand? I don't know. What about that one? What is that? That, that, that? that one looks like like, like, like a uh, radiator or. Uh, if I were to guess, if Japanese is based upon the characters of the symbols, it looks like a city block, a tree, and a mountain, which is actually the three things that you would use in an emoji conversation to describe Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a volcano in there as well. We should check that later. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, then a few more advanced tips. Can you can you put it so, so basically they can see us a little bit? Yeah. No, nope, your Great. face is right in the camera. <laughs> okay. Uh, see, now we remove the camera down. No, no, my, okay. Yeah, so these are the so some of the basic sh shower ideas, but obviously a huge part in deciding where your shower is gonna go, no matter what kind of uh, shower you pick, uh, except if you if it's an outdoor shower, outdoor shower doesn't really affect their layout. Mm -hmm. But any other of these ideas, you're gonna have to sort of like strategically think about a few other things. Well, mainly three things. Yes. We're gonna explain one uh, each one in detail, but so they are the water pipes, the water heating. And the amount of water that you're going to use. Now, yeah. all of these three can be combined together, but each one is a separate entity on its yeah. own that must be thought about. Now, obviously, if you're gonna have a full shower, a fully sized shower in your in your vehicle, uh, that will make you use more water. No matter what you do, it, when you stand up in in your shower cubicle, or whatever, whatever, whether it's a convertible one or not you're going to be using more water than if you were to basically uh, use the sink or so, or something that basically you can regulate your water usage a bit better. Well, yeah, like, you know, you have the proper big round circular shower heads and then you get those little ones that you just like can handhold and go like that. Yeah, and, with... it, and you can control con control the pressure with your yeah. hand or... Those small ones yeah. use less water than the big round ones that fall from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of water usage, think... uh, you should know that uh, a, a standard sort of shower head use about eight litres per minute. Yep, I don't know what that is in gallons per whatever time unit, but litres per minute is about eight litres per minute. The eco showers, the kind of the best showers that you can buy for a standard house is about four litres per minute. It's about half the usage. But if you think about it, an average shower is about eight minutes, they say. So eight minutes times four litres, which is the most efficient eco shower head that you can buy is 32 litres. Now, if you only have a hundred liter, uh, if you have a one hundred liter water tank, thirty two liters per person, so that's two of us, yeah. sixty four liters, yeah, that only leaves you. So thirty two liters uh, oh. per shower. Yeah, we're going here. M like that's minimum. Min 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 min. min. Just put m minimum. Yep, so that's I, the minimum. I can, I can remember how so to... That's, <laughs> so that's an eight-hour shower... Uh, an eight-hour... An eight-hour eight shower. <laughs> an eight-minute shower times four litres per minute, which is the most efficient shower head that you can buy. Times that by two people. Well, uh... Times that by fine, both of us. Fine, okay. That's yes, 34. That's uh, 64. 64, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Now, a 100 litre uh, water tank is about... I guess the yeah, standard. Yeah, so, so if you have uh, 100 liters minus uh, 64 liters. Equals. Oh, don't do that to me. I'm, I'm, I'm not 36. Well. Thank you. <laughs> 36 li liters of water uh, remaining for the rest of the day. Yeah, so like if you have a shower pretty much every morning, that it, it is only going to last you. It, one day. It means that you have to refill with water every single day, which means that you probably have to be plugged in more into the grid and you can't go off grid and basically be, um, you know, not in civilization for three or four or a week. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, basically. Now, I mean, 
you could increase the size of your water tank to 200 or 300 liters, but that means when you are filled to the brim, you have to, you know, water is about a kilo per liter. So that's going to be 300 kilograms that you're going to have to carry around. Yeah. But basically, yeah. if you're going to have a full shower like that, and especially if there's two of you, uh, which is very often the case, um, you will most likely need more than 100 litres, um, uh, especially if you're taking your shower every single day. Uh, now, personally, I don't need a shower every single day. I need it about every two days or so. He needs it every day. His hair is well, my hair horrendous. <laughs> um, but also, um, uh, in terms of um, how, if you're like on the road or want to be off grid for a bit longer, you can make do with maybe... Uh, sort of, let's say, one shower, what well, one full body shower that week, uh, plus uh, an extra wash or two of the hair in the sink, and then plus wet wipes or something like that. Like, you can regulate your water usage a bit better if you want to be off-grid yeah. for longer, um, meaning that you'll not be dirty, you'll just be washing yourself in different ways, or if if it's warm weather or if there's hot, hot springs or something like that, you can also do those as well. Yeah. Um, so there are ways to do it. Um, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not basically uh, black and white, uh, but generally... If you basically gonna treat your van as your house uh, and nothing else, like you're not actually traveling at that particular moment in time, you're just living in it, uh, then you know you have to really consider the, this sort of uh, uh, maths in terms of how much yeah. water you're using. And the thing is, these the simplest ideas, the the solar shower and the bucket shower. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, mostly the solar shower. If you think about it, usually that bag or container or whatever it is. Let me zoom in. No, that's fine. They can probably see. Yeah, this bag here. It's they classify it or they they advertise it as enough for one shower. Now, obviously, that is not thirty liters. That's going to be heavy if that's going to be thirty liters. I think, I think they're usually like seven to ten liters. Yeah. And because the way that they build the pressure, either you pump it or it's connected to an electric pump, but they have a tiny, tiny, tiny holes so that the water comes out. You get the same amount of wet with less water. Yeah. Therefore, you're able to have a shower for five minutes quite happily with one of these. It uses all the water and you've had a shower for only 10 litres rather than 30. So in a way, one of these showers sometimes is better than one of these yeah. for water saving purposes from that point of that angle that you're looking at it from. Yeah. Um, and in terms of how big your water tanks are, uh, well, no matter how big they are, uh, a huge thing uh, about basically where to place the water tanks in conjunction to your um Tap, taps of so shower and, and, and um, uh, your sink tap, uh, your, your kitchen sink and things like that um, and that has a huge impact on where your pipes go your tanks should be as close to your uh, taps as possible <laughs> um, which means that um, can we go up here yeah let's go up here let's roll it up oops sorry about the shaking there we go okay so if we put the shower, if we keep the shower, the, the red shower there. Yeah. Okay. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. There we go. All right. So when when considering where to put your shower and, and, and so on and so, so forth, um, you have to think about where to put the pipes uh, and you have to think about um, the how strong your pumps are. So in terms of how much pressure uh, you, you're going to get out of your, out of your um, uh, sh- shower head. So if you were to if your shower's here and you put your your fresh water tank here, uh, then you have to. So this is water. H two O. Oh, I I already was. <laughs> anyway, um, you have to drag the the pipes all the way here. Okay. And the uh, longer the longer that your pipes are, the more you have to insulate pipes, but also the more you have to physically pump the water all the way from one to the next and you have a greater length for things to go wrong as well yeah and um, also more pipes more stuff takes up more space in the van i mean pipes right. that pipe may not seem like a lot of space but every centimeter counts yeah so uh really where you can stash your water tanks really depends on how you place your storage around the shower so um uh, there's different ways to do it I'm, I'm breaking the walls of, different ways uh, to do it including rubbing out the wall of the van yeah so, uh, of course, you can put the water tank underneath. So you can put both the grey and the fresh water tanks underneath the van. Yeah. Um, uh, the grey water underneath the van is fine because you can drain the water quite easily out there. Fresh water underneath the van, if you're going for four season, uh, a.k.a. it's going to get minus or below, um, um, then 
Yes, yeah, z- zero or below. <laughs> Sorry, that did not make any sense. Um, uh, then uh, obviously having the water tank insulated inside the vehicle will um well save your water in the winter mm-hmm. uh, and pipes and so forth. So, yeah, because when water freezes, it expands and it will crack the pipe. So as minimal water exposure to ice or to freezing temperatures mm-hmm. as possible, aka having the water tank inside the van. Theoretically, the uh, safer you are from so, freezing. So, for example, let's say you have some sort of storage cupboard there. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, and basically what, what you do is at the bottom of that, uh, you put your water tank underneath there. And yeah. what happens is the pipe literally has to go there. <laughs> okay. And, the, and this, yeah, Boop. yeah. Um, uh, and then from, from here, uh, it goes into the shower cubicle and then down into the gray water. So that would sort of look like from the side uh, that would be roughly like here like that um, the water tank would take about that much of the height behind it well, yeah in front of it yeah and then basically the pipe would go up here into the shower head yep whoever whatever design it has and then after that it goes down here into, into the, the gray water which is underneath the van or underneath the shower however yeah the thing is also you can't store obviously your water tanks on the ceiling of the van because if you put a lot of weight up there first of all you have to mount it up there and secondly when you're turning a corner in the van that's just going to be sloshing around and yeah plus in terms of stealth you know stealth mode having water tanks on the top of the vehicle is <laughs> something i've never seen actually um so yeah Bro, i just i just don't think it's uh viable option most of the time but there's uh, a lot of reasons against it yeah uh just, just to say the least yeah. <laughs> from that perspective yeah so um, first of all you've got to think about the amount of water that the shower is going to use secondly you've got to think about well where is my shower going to be positioned in relation to everything else and where are the water tanks going to be positioned therefore how much piping and such is going to needed uh, going to be needed and so on uh which includes by the way insulation because water pipes I can't believe I have to say this, has to be insulated. Well, when we were in the van in Scandinavia, which was classified as a four-season van, that had metal work showing from the inside, and that included the pipe work from the freshwater tank going into the shower cubicle. Yeah, what he means is the um, uh, we could see basically the, the metal work of the, of the van wall, and what was more, the pipes were basically attached to that wall basically so basically there was uh cold weather outside no insulation basically the metal conducts the cold uh inside the vehicle and it hits directly the water pipes uh that basically the basically feed, feed, feed the whole van um so i don't know who thought that was a good design but it wasn't literally the the moment okay, your the, hand is right in the camera sorry so literally the 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 the, mo- the moment the um uh, the temperature went below minus six i think roughly mm. um the some of the taps slowed down and because we couldn't um we couldn't carry on driving that night because we had just finished a massive hike as mm-hmm. uh, you know if you want to watch the video it's out now you you, you can you, you can see the, the how strenuous that hike was um uh, but basically minus temperatures we're the driver's absolutely exhausted um uh, he couldn't carry on so by the next morning actually all of our tabs were not working so we were really really shitting ourselves that the, our rented van is gonna have frozen broken pipes and we rocketed yeah. ourselves down south yeah so literally in, in 12 hours we were back down like near stockholm <laughs> uh but and thankfully the pipes are fine uh yeah. they, they, they they melted they they, they uh, unfroze themselves, but it was very tense. So really, uh, pipes freezing is a real thing. So insulation is key. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you've got the amount of water that they use, where your water tanks are in relation to everything else and where your shower is. And the third thing is, you're probably going to want a warm shower. I mean, you can have a cold shower if you want to. We want warm showers. <laughs> And the way that you heat that water well, again. Cold showers for the the summer, fine, absolutely fine. You, oh, yeah. you, you, you don't have to waste energy on on hot showers, and I ain't gonna be doing that either. Um, but yeah, so basically, again, four season for for full time living, living, you're gonna need to have uh, some sort of heating system in there. Yeah. So there are a couple of ways that you can heat water. Well, yeah, the water needs to be heated somehow. So either you can have an instant hot water heater, which basically you connect your water tank to the instant hot water heater and that instant hot water heater 
go straight into the shower. Usually these are located actually in the shower, like connected to the shower itself uh, so that you don't lose a lot of heat. But it's a, what are you... It's an instant water heat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know they can't see that. Oh. Right, let's, let's go to the yellow camera. There we go. So yeah, basically the, water, the cold water comes into here, something happens and uh, the water is heated and it goes straight out the shower. I was imagining like a kettle. Isn't yeah, it? So it's yeah. basically well, it's electrical it, conduction yeah. of uh, com like it creates yeah. heat. Yeah. So yeah, basically you use electricity to heat water instantly from cold into the temperature that you want because you can control it on a dial there directly, and then that comes out of the tap, of voila. Yeah. It comes out. At, I don't know what what's the normal shower temperature? 30, 32 degrees, thirty three degrees Celsius. Mm. Well, I don't know. Is is it is it hotter than than our body temperature or not? No. 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 Hotter than our body temperature feels very, very hot. Approaching yeah. our body temperature is it, the best. It's, it's hotter than our surface temperature. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that is. But anyway, so yeah, that's what it does. And it comes out at about 30, 32 degrees straight out of the hot water heater. The second thing, and this is what most houses do, the second thing that you have is you have a boiler. So you have a, you have a fresh water tank, and then you also have another tank, which is usually smaller than this one, which contains only hot water. Now, this hot water can't be stored at 30 degrees because then you get bacteria growing. So it has to be stored at like 50, 50, 50 60 degrees mm -hmm. to basically kill off any bacteria. So what it does is you have a, a, a tank that's insulated to keep the heat in. Uh, some sort of heating element will heat the water to 60 degrees, turn off, and then when the water drops back below down about 55, then it will kick back on, heat it back up to 60, and basically repeat that cycle. And then what it does is it uses that hot water in combination with cold water to then feed your shower, because you can't shower in 60 degrees. So it kind of mixes the Ooh, two. Oh, be, that'll be burning. <laughs> so like when you turn the hot tap on full in your house, that's the temperature of the water that's coming straight out, minus any heat loss that it has along the pipes. Straight out at, at that temperature. So but, most houses use that. But the issue with having a boiler, especially in a uh, in, in a camper, um, is that you can't have that big of a boiler. Like if if uh, you you're, if you've seen the boilers uh, in obviously in big houses, they're massive. They they they're, they're, I, 400 I, liters? like I can fit. I can if uh, I if I open one, I can fit in it. Okay, I can, I'll have to crouch a bit. I won't fit height-wise usually, but I can. My whole body, my whole my volume will will fit in into that into that tank. But <laughs> usually, like the 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 boilers that can fit in uh, campers, they're about maybe the size of this board. So basically, like in comparison to my hand, that 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 mm -hmm. that's how big roughly that there would be, um, in terms of sort of volume imagine this is 3d um uh, and um they are only basically about 10 to 15 liters yeah so as we said earlier you use uh about uh, 32 liters of water so the... let's let's say it's a 50 50 mix between 60 degree boiler water and cold water that combines to make your decently shower water mm -hmm. you would basically use that 15 liters of hot water in one shower that means the next person can't have a warm shower until another 15 litres is heated back up to 60. Which actually takes too long for, for, for comfort. An like, li literally, uh, actually, our morning routine as Scandinavia, if both was well, would have a shower in the morning at the same time, um, <clears throat> one after the other, uh, basically, the whole morning would maybe take two hours. <laughs> so, first, uh, you know, one of us will have, have a shower, then we'll have breakfast, then we'll start, you know, wasting time by you know doing random tasks that don't need it entirely you know to be done at that point so the water will heat up so the next person will have a shower so yeah. um you know boilers yes they're sort of they're instant but they're very finite especially in a small space like this yeah and it means you just have to have more complexity because you have to have a separate water tank which is insulated in and of itself and then you have to have a water pipe coming out of that hot water uh, combined with the cold water to merge into one water stream so that it can come out at the right temperature meanwhile with an that. instant hot water heater you, you, you just have one stream of water and you just adjust the temperature yeah. although hot instant hot water heaters are um they are more energy sucking they do need a lot more energy oh, yeah. to heat that water they're, instantly. They're like a kettle or, or, or a microwave, basically, that they suck power out very quickly. Yeah. So you have to be very considerate, again, with how long your shower is in, yeah. in, in when, when you have your solar panels and your finite battery system and things like that. Yeah, but it does get you to lose, uh, you use less hot water, I guess, if you've got like a, I can't use it, I don't want to use this much electricity, so... 
It balances up. Then, uh, obviously, th- th- these are two slightly more advanced ways to basically um, warm up your water. You can just use uh, a, <laughs> a kettle, kettle or just uh, a pan and boil 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 yourself some water. Yeah, like um, the solar showers don't have an instant hot water heater in themselves usually well that well the, no that the solar is is a, is a thing oh, that, that runs one. it well, but but the ugh. pressure ones basically well, when you have like there's a, a hose lock you type in on google, in google hose yeah, basically lock. you pre-pump um, it yeah when you yeah basically you you pre-pump the pressure and basically you you, you the the it, the water temperature is whatever temperature you put inside yeah so um, basically you boil the kettle you pour it in you add some cold water you dip your hand in going that's that's warm enough to shower yeah. in. Close the lid, pump it up, and shower yeah. in it. Actually, a, um, a very good example of this is uh, the Indie Projects have a video on this. Um, uh, just type in Indie Projects hose lock shower, and it will come up. The, yeah. they, they show you exactly what we mean about uh, mixing your own water temperature <laughs> up. Uh, but essentially, yeah, basically, uh, we're going from sort of like uh, really advanced stuff to the cheap, easier, slightly more rustic uh, way, yeah. of, way of doing things, which is perfectly fine. And um, on, honestly, sometimes it's better because it really does make you think about how much water you actually need. Uh, and and you, you notice how much water is actually wasted. So um, when you take a you know, full, full size yeah. over the head shower. <laughs> next time, next time you have a shower, like probably not very possible, but if you were to connect a hose uh, like to the drain of your shower and just measure how much water you use mm. and time yourself like how long are you in that shower and how much water you use okay now imagine that that you have to somehow find every single day on top of like water that you would use in the kitchen and stuff mm-hmm. makes you realize how much water a shower takes yeah unfortunately all showers take water but there are ways to reduce it and there are different ways that you can use uh, like so Depending on your circumstance and depending, like, how you're planning. Like, if you're always going to be connected to water, or pretty much always, then uh, it's a then different it's, kind of it's, problem. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem, but when we're talking about, you know, living off the grid and living full-time, yep. or as full-time off-grid as possible, um, you know, th- these sort of considerations are very important. Um, and basically, yeah. how, how, basically you, ha- you have to find where is the kind of the sweet, sweet spot for, for compromise. Yep. You know, uh, you, you have to wear, uh, you have to think about the weight in terms of uh, you know how much water you carry, um, uh, and you have to think about how much space uh, your your <laughs> showers take. Now, um, you know, we're gonna do a live stream on on a flat pack uh, shower idea, as I mentioned earlier, which we have not uh, really touched upon here because I think it would just be a, a bit too confusing with so many drawings, so many options on on the board. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're gonna discuss how to basically not take the physical floor space um um you know actually it's a, it, it it takes the um uh the pull out sh- sh- shower tray idea to kind of a, a new sort of um, yeah. perspective uh, and we're going to talk more about the toilet element of it as well because mm. here we we focus very much on uh, the shower but actually usually the shower and the toilet go, go together and it's also we want to discuss and try and figure out how to basically um, have the shower situation create privacy for the toilet situation yeah because um, usually well, I mean, like we said, the shower takes an 80 by 80 c- centimetre space, but then you add the toilet on top, then, you know, it kind of <laughs> maybe extends it a bit longer. You have an entire wet room and then that gets bigger and then there's no division between if you want someone to take a shower and someone to go to the toilet at the same time. So, yeah, there's yeah. that problem to figure out. And if you have guests over there, are not going to walk in when you're showering to go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. So, any questions? Uh, maybe 50 litres, one person shower. Um, 50 litres. In an average shower, we said it's 8 litres per minute. and an 8, eight litres per minute and an 8 minute shower, that's 64 litres. Yeah. I guess if you're conservative, 50 litres, or if you have a good shower, 50 litres is about right. I would say in the range of 50 to 100 litres per shower is about what the average person would use. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean... The water usage of showers has been going down to try and save water, but there's still well, a well, lot. Well, the shower heads are improving, definitely. Yeah. Um, but they're still nowhere near. I mean, actually, you you can test your shower. Um, uh, just get a um. I mean, how 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 efficient your shower head is. Like, get a uh, container, um, any sort of container. Um, and uh, <laughs> just uh. uh Time how long it takes yeah. to fill one liter. Yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, get get a w- one liter bucket, 
uh, and uh, fill it to the one in the mark while timing it, and then basically just uh, uh, do the maths and see see how how much. Yeah. Um, right, like I said, water. eight liters per minute is one liter every. What's that? Every uh, seven to eight seconds. So essentially, yeah. this is half a liter. It, it, your shower uses uh, <laughs> one of these every three to four seconds. Every yeah. three to four seconds. You can't even pour water out that fast out of one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking my water. Mm. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I'm going to drink right. now. <laughs> so, uh, that is pretty much it. Unless anyone has any other questions about uh, these specific showers or our wonderful designs or... Anything else? Or heating or pipes or insulation to do with water and whatnot and stuff. Yeah, I still yeah. can't believe that that Scandinavia van had no insulation around the pipes. They literally had the pipes next to the metalwork of the van, which when you touched and actually on one occasion had frost on the inside. Yeah, but well, that, there was that, frost that, on the inside of the metalwork of the van. That and was they the, the minus right, fourteen time. They put pipes right there. There was frost it. inside the van. <sighs> We were very lucky that the, those pipes survived. Otherwise, that would have been bad. Yeah, we forget it. Um, like <laughs> that, that would have been our own pop pop uh, uh, you know water system in our van, completely gone to fix an- another van, a, yeah, a, a van system. Probably expensive more. to fix them. Yeah. He said, actually no, because uh, when the um, when 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 you know they come with rental vehicles, they come and check that you haven't I don't know broken put something a, put a giant chip or scratch or dent and with camper vans they may have to make sure that everything works the first thing that he did he opened the uh the 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 van door and he pressed the automatic step which we had never used uh, in our time in the van and it didn't open properly and i was like oh no oh no and he just got a piece of plastic on the underneath obviously because that step is stored underneath the van so it was like lower and our ground clearance is not that high to begin with and we definitely did go over a few bumps which probably yeah. tested that ground clearance to its limits yeah. aka that step got hit by speed bumps and stuff it's fine it wasn't broken just the plastic just, was a just, bit wonky he just, he just shoved the plastic and went it still works yeah but we never used the step yeah so oh well basically a bit of wisdom about rental vehicles don't 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 rent them or at least get zero excess on them yeah but that usually requires a lot of money yeah anyway yeah. okay so i don't see any more questions uh, uh c- coming in right now yeah yeah that's it yeah cool so yeah uh as, as i said there's more stuff on patreon and we're going to be going more in depth uh, uh on there as well in terms of that so you can uh, find us there and ask specific questions and we'll answer you specifically and then basically have a discussion with you there so uh, make sure that you if you want that Come and find us there. We'll be there uh, for you. Uh, So, yeah. Okay. See you next time. See you next time. time, guys. Goodbye.